I saw that the creator formerly known as Diversity in Comics posted this tweet from some literally who complaining about the new boogeyman SJW pros are obsessed with. Customer service. They're worried about people telling them what stories to write and having to give refunds. I've seen this stuff popping up in my feed since Substack deals went out. All the people I've seen bringing this up have piss poor sales and zero deals, so there's a bit of irony here since this isn't a problem any of them ever have because no one buys their books. Their obsession with this seems to come from this idea that their artistic integrity is the most important thing in the world ever. Definitely more important than producing a product people actually want to buy. So you get statements like this one from Tom Muller, who appears to be a logo designer, and I'm only telling you that to emphasize just how much no one cares. He says, quote, I see that the whole comics are customer service industry argument is rearing its head again from the usual corner of the internet. You mean yours? Because literally the only ones bringing this up are on your side. No one else is talking about this. They're not. Comics are part of the publishing industry. If you want to discuss customer service, talk to your retailer of choice. As someone said on DNC's post, I had no idea publishing was an industry with no customers. When a publisher prints a book, they just put it out in the streets and whoever wants it just picks it up and goes. Oh wait, that's not what happens. They sell the book. Money is exchanged. That's a transaction, meaning there's a customer, a person who gives money for a product, and a service, someone providing the product. When a publisher sells to a retailer, the publisher is technically the retailer, and the store that sells the book is the customer. Does Tom think that if a publisher sent retailers blank books that the retailer should talk to someone else? No, they should talk to the people who sent them the books. If someone buys the book from the store and finds the blank pages, should the store be the one to take the blame? No, the publisher should take the blame for printing blank books. We see this with misprints, missing pages, illegible text, and so on. The stores don't have a responsibility to address that issue. The publishers do. Someone then asked Tom what this is all about, because when these folks talk about things, they love to talk in code or around it. And he says, quote, It is a thinly veiled false argument from fans to tell creators and publishers to make the good, aka derivative, comics they demand, because a customer is always right. You mean like so-called fans demanding the same derivative diversity, representation, and inclusivity stories from creators and publishers because it would make the comics good? And then those so-called fans are losing their shit whenever the changes aren't done the way they want? And that's the irony of this complaint. You're complaining about things your side does all the time. It's perfectly fine when you do it, it's only wrong when it's done to you. Creating this straw man argument about the customer is always right doesn't change that people who pay attention to their audience tend to be more successful. If you were just about putting your vision out there, you'd just post the story online for free and call it a day. But that's not what you're doing. You want people to buy it, but you also don't want to pay attention to what people want to buy. I don't know how you can be successful if you don't pay attention to that. Someone calls him out on this, saying that Tom's argument is like a beer maker who changed their recipe, telling people who didn't like it to take it up with the store they bought it from. Tom then says, quote, except that you're comparing two vastly different industries and situations. Also, that new recipe might be great, but if you personally don't like it, you can't expect the brewery to change the recipe back to please you. Tell that to Coca-Cola. This exact situation happened to them when they decided to change the recipe for Coke. Some people liked the new taste, some didn't care, but more people hated it. According to Tom's logic, the company should have told the displeased customers to piss off and drink something else. Had they done that, Coke would have lost more money and faced greater backlash than they had already got. That's the thing Tom isn't bringing up. This little stunt didn't just make people stop drinking Coke too, it made them stop buying any Coke products. It also cost them a ton of money in marketing when they decided to switch back to the original recipe, not just to get the word out, but to convince people that this was indeed the original recipe and to win back their favor enough to get them to buy it. A similar thing happened with Gibson a few years ago. They put out this video chastising other companies for making Gibson style guitars. Not just the people literally copying their guitars and putting Gibson logos on it, but people who were using the general body shapes and adding their own branding. Gibson also went after the people who reviewed those guitars, attacking them for giving attention to these knockoffs. The title of the video was Play Authentic, and yes, I can actually hear your eyes rolling. It was a douchey thing to do considering that Gibson had almost gone bankrupt, were having quality control issues, and that it's cheaper to go to college than buy one of their guitars. The reason a knockoff market is so strong is for those issues, the pricing in particular. This video damaged Gibson's brand to the point that people were actually selling their valuable vintage guitars because they wanted nothing to do with a company that seemed to despise its customers. If I buy a guitar and there's an issue, the neck won't straighten, it won't intonate, the electronics don't work, the company who made the guitar is responsible. 
If I return the guitar to the retailer, the retailer will contact the company to find out the next steps. If the company's response is like Tom's, they just hand wave it away, making the retailer eat the cost of the return and the bad reputation that follows. Earlier this year, I bought a PRS. The one I ordered had a grounding issue, meaning something wasn't wired or soldered correctly. The retailer called me to let me know and offered a refund or to replace it with a different guitar of the same model. But he also said that the faulty guitar had to be sent back to PRS. Why? Because PRS doesn't want chit guitars on the market because it ruins their brand. It would make people not buy their guitars. That's customer service. They're making sure you can get the best product you can get. And if there is a production issue that manages to get through, they will work with the retailer or you directly to fix or replace the guitar. They don't have to do it, but it's good business when they do. And this seems to be the thing completely absent from this strain of creators working in comics. They don't understand good business. Here they are talking about their new projects, and they're leading with the, you won't get a refund before the book is even out. Kind of makes it sound like they know people won't like what they make. Like someone said on DNC's post, when your goal is to get people to buy your books, you should be concerned that people don't like you. Don't take their word for it. Just ask Coke and Gibson. I agree that readers don't get to tell you what story to write, but they do get to tell you whether or not your story works. And if they find that they don't like your story, I think you should give them their money back, especially if they bought it directly from you. That's the other thing Tom is missing. When you crowdfund a project, you're not just the creator, you're the retailer. There is no middleman. People are buying directly from you. So if there's a problem, that comes back to you. Tom works as a logo designer, so he knows full well that if he pulled this attitude with a client, I made it, you paid for it, so shut up. He'd never get work again. This applies to comics. If you put out poorly edited books, have unreadable art and lettering, smudgy ink, misprinted or missing pages, and your attitude is no refunds, no one will buy your books. If you attack the readers, write stories that are little more than self-insert revenge fantasies, change beloved characters and shit on legacy, no one will buy your books. If you tell people, if you don't like my politics, don't buy my books, no one will buy your books. That's ultimately what this is about. It's not about your artistic integrity, it's about making money. If it were about the art, you could just post it online or give it away. No, you want to make a profit, so you need to tailor what you do towards that goal. If you ran a bakery and you wanted to make gluten-free cookies, but everybody wants to buy your gluten-laden bagels, you make bagels or you no longer have a bakery. And if your bagels don't taste good or they make people sick, you stop making them until you figure out why. You don't tell your customers to go somewhere else because you will no longer have a bakery. The same logic applies here. If people tell you there's a problem with the printing, you find out if there's actually a problem, and if there is, you fix it and you send the new copies or you allow refunds. If people buy your book from you, then you need to be upfront on whether you allow refunds if people don't like it, and make damn sure you don't try to bait and switch them in the story, because you will pay for it in your next campaign. This idea that the person giving you their money has no say in what they receive is bad business, and every business I know that pulls the, we know better than you so shut up and give us your money routine, ends up losing money and customers. Don't take my word for it. Just ask Vince McMahon. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.